how would you overcome the obvious barriers of people's naivety around the capabilities of somebody who is i suppose i could say you're missing like the, the bottom half of your lower arm right that's what's not there yeah um, so, so first of all how was it racing against all those able-bodied kids like were you kicking their asses or like I, it sounds really weird but like i've never even thought of myself as disabled and like i've got video footage of me from like back in the day like when i was 13 and stuff and i i state like right there and then that my aim was the olympics like i never had even considered disability sport it wasn't even a thing for me and and to be honest i I didn't want to do that side of the sport because I just, I was like, well, I can do the Olympic stuff. I can do the able-bodied stuff and I can compete and race with these guys. So why, why do I want to go and sail with these old guys with these bits missing when actually I'm just as good as these kids? So yeah, I never, I never even considered disability sport. And then, yeah, I just, I was charging <laughs> straight ahead for the Olympics. And what about the back? Did you have barriers that you had to overcome, or like convincing? Um, I, I, I've just I've worked in and around the outdoor like adventure sports world for a long time, and I can just imagine sort of a I don't know a, a head instruct RYA instructor or something like that who gets very nervous about the idea of the 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 girl who can go quick but but is missing a bit of an arm. Uh, sending her out on the water on her own is is they get a bit panicky about stuff like that. Yeah, it's really, like, it's really funny. Like, I, it wasn't so much, like, in the early years, like, it wasn't really noticed. But then the more into it I got and the further along and the older I got, the more it started to become an issue, which is, like, it's actually crazy because I was probably more of a health hazard when I was younger and racing than I was when I was older. I actually knew what I was doing. So, yeah, it's sort of, like, through my teenagers, it definitely became an issue. Um, I had, like, one performance manager who, like, we'd go in for our review meetings to see, like, whether you're on the right path, whether you're in the right boat, whether you're sailing with the right person. And he was like, you're in the wrong sport. <laughs> no <laughs> he's way! Like, yeah, he's like, straight out, your sailing's not your sport, you shouldn't be doing it. Actually, you should consider something else. Have you tried table tennis? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like no <laughs> te te no i'm sorry to anyone that likes table tennis but just no <laughs> so no <laughs> so yeah he he straight up was like no you can't and uh, yeah that was a pretty a pretty tough meeting to be told that it's not your sport and it's something you enjoy and love and want to do <laughs> and you've got this guy like oh no it's not your sport <laughs> Does that, you, you know, when I learned to kayak, I was quite young and um, I learned in a swimming pool and I was about eight years old and maybe nine years old. And the guy who was the instructor delivering the introduction program, but just before the start of a session, um, he did an Eskimo roll. And we were all like, oh, wow. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, you're, you're second to God <laughs> in our world at this point in time. And, um, <laughs> And then we, so we said, well, what, what was that? He's like, oh, that's an Eskimo roll. They're like, we're like, teach us. He said, oh, no, no, no. Only the really good people to do that. It's unlikely you'll ever be good enough. And I still reflect back to what was the motivation in my childhood to like push forwards with kayaking? And it was probably to prove that guy wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. Did, did you get that same, same sensation from the performance manager? I got it and I got it better. So, um, Right. Recently, I've started doing um, some speaking about my, my journey and, and things I've learned. And I actually went to give a talk at a university and he was there. <laughs> he turned no. up to my talk. <laughs> and one of my stories is being told that you can't do something. <laughs> and this guy's sitting right there in the audience and I'm just like, oh my god am I gonna have to change my talk and I'm like do you know what no actually and I went for it I just was like brutally honest as I tend to be and yeah he was sat right there so <laughs> did he come up to you afterwards he did actually he came up and he um was like you've done really well for yourself and I was like oh, thanks very much <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you didn't feel, I, I, uh, I think you'd be struggling to put my fingers up towards him. Um, in very, very rude gestures. <laughs> I think calling him out in front of a thousand people probably did the job. <laughs> well, at least, at least you didn't go and put his name on a slide and like directly point at him. Like, here's his name and he sat just there. 
<laughs> yeah, you can beat him up after the talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's incredible. <laughs> and so then, what? what, what ha, uh, I've lost my words, but so you were set on the Olympics, <laughs> but then obviously somebody gave you the opportunity to take uh, take sailing to the next level, but also to step into the Paralympic sort of world. How did like? did that hurt your head because you were set on you were set on full olympics when you were younger what, what happened there so i got a phone call from andy castles who was the atlanta gold medalist and he was training for sydney and he basically just said look i've heard that you're the sailor you're disabled i'm training for sydney i'd like you to come and hang out with us for a weekend and kind of see what we're all about um i remember throwing the mother of all tantrums i'm like 15 years old at this point i'm into the youth squad i'm you know i'm proper cool i've got my team jacket i'm you know i'm team gb for the able body stuff and i've got this dude ringing me telling me i've got to go and hang out with them for a weekend to look at some dis disabled sailing and i'm like you yeah, know <laughs> but i got i got persuaded by my parents um i think some bribery may have occurred and my dad actually had to come with me to the the weekend training and ended up sailing which is <laughs> bonkers but yeah it got me on the water and that like that weekend it kind of changed it changed everything for me like my viewpoint was changed andy is such a legend of a guy like he he has the same attitude that i have which is like it's not it's not about the disability it's not it's just about just going sailing and let's just go sailing and race and yeah, he showed me that that's what it was about and that it wasn't a weaker a weaker side of our sport. It was just the same, just done mm. by disabled people. So, yeah, it was a real eye-opener for me. What Was there a tipping point in that weekend where you were like, you had like, because I can imagine you sort of arriving a bit like, my parents have bribed me to be here. I'll kind of suffer it for the weekend. And next week I'll go back to being a junior GB person and... <laughs> And I, we'll, we'll, we'll put this behind us. What Was there a tipping point? Yeah. We, um, so basically I was racing against Andy in his like tuning boat, his sparring boat. So, and he like handed it to us on a platter. Like, <laughs> like, and my dad was in the boat with me and my dad's a good racer and he's strong and like, we're fiery. And this guy was just handing it to us time and time again. And I think I was just like, this is not on. <laughs> like, I don't like being beaten. So what is happening here? Like we need to do something. And just like over and over again being beaten and realizing that Andy's a pretty epic sailor here and actually that it's not about the disability. And it's like, right, okay then. <laughs> Game <Yeah>. one, Andy. <laughs> well, I guess the difference between like para in terms of speed and whatever else, the difference between Paralympic and Olympic can't be that much. It's nothing. It's the same race course. It's the same boats. It's just it's just done by disabled people. That's the bizarre thing about it. It's the, it's a genuinely inclusive sport, which is you know one of the coolest things, I guess. Yeah, and and the times uh, roughly you're doing the same times as the uh, as the Olymp, Olymp, like or whatever you want to call them, the others. <laughs> the others. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's crazy because like for every regatta through the season, the Olympic and Paralympic classes race the same events at the same time. It's just literally the Olympics and the Paralympics where we get separated. So it's kind of, yeah, it's bonkers really because you're like, well, I spend all year racing with these guys and then we just, for the games, it's that one week where you've got to be Olympic and Paralympic as separate events. So nuts and what what do you have to do to like adapt the boat or adapt yourself or whatever to um uh, well uh, state the obvious to to compensate from for being minus a hand i mean is what, what do you have to do uh so i actually didn't use any adaptations at all like the the sonar keel boat was the boat that i ended up sailing mm. is is an able-bodied boat it's mm. it's sailed by able-bodied guys all over the world and yeah, I didn't have any adaptations. I didn't need anything. And the good, the two guys that I sailed with barely needed anything. You know, we had one um, bar that went across the boat, which was for Steve if he needed it. But like, I probably saw him use it once or twice, like my whole career. And John had a, a transfer bench, which he literally slid from side to side. And that was, that was everything. 
and it, it was quite cool because it meant we could go up against the able-bodied guys with our boats and just be like yeah cool bring it <laughs> let's, let's have a race and it was, it was quite cool to be in that position to not need to adapt it to be on the same level yeah because i think that's people's like version of adaptive sport is like there's all sorts of fancy prosthetic -y, gimmick -y things all over the place and uh actually there's there's very little need for it as long as we think can think well enough yeah exactly and it's like it's a total bugbear of mine like when you go to some disabled events and they're like oh bless your heart you can't be you can't do this you can't do this and you're like well why don't you ask me and like if i can do this before you you judge and oh my god you're an amputee so how could you possibly and you're like just just watch just like, just just yeah this is one of my total like frustrations with disability sport in general you turn up and they're like oh my god you can't do this and you're like ah, wait you don't know me <laughs> I, I think there's a there's like a thing where um you, you get a certain sort of coach or instructor that wants to coach or instruct adaptive sport let's be honest about it there it does it does it is a certain sort of person very caring person and they feel like they have to be very um, organized and have a plan and have all sorts of solutions in place. And, and I've, I've run a, a series of um, like adaptive canoeing and kayaking programs for qualified coaches for the British, for British canoeing. And the thing is, the thing I say to you, don't have a plan. Just say to the person, show me what you can do. Exactly that. That's how everybody should start with coaching of any disabled sport. Just like, let's figure out what you can do and then we'll figure out what we need to do. <laughs> well, and, and it's really interesting because if you take that approach and put that into able-bodied sport and just say, show me what you can do as well, it's, it's freaky about how much people can do and how little instruction and coaching they need. Yeah. It's, it's a really cool approach and I, like, I use it with all my other coaching, not just sailing coaching, like leadership coaches. It's better for you to show me what you can do rather than me just assume what you can do because then, you know, we're going to be on the back foot from the start. So, yeah, it's a much better approach. <laughs>